And we're back with the new crew, and thank goodness we're not back a second the sound box. So I love the place, but good to be somewhere different at the Tokyo Expressway East Out of Loop as the race is underway. Guys, this track, I haven't raced it that much. I'm not that great at this track myself. Other people are very clear. But I like it because you're faced with a choice. Do you set up your car for the straight? Speaking of the straight, we're on board Mr. Boomtown. Who looks to represent his car for the straight? The GTI is already quick. But from the looks of it, it looks like he has long downforce. Because look at the way he got out from his ninth position. He's so close to the top four. And he looks like he's going to be a weapon on the straight. So you have two choices. Set up your car for the straight. As we saw Mr. Boomtown, we're setting up for the corner. There's some long sweeping corners to reach. You have a lot of downforce. Your car will be quick. And it looks like some contact with your ninth drive, Mr. Boomtown. The two people from the rest of the was supposed to be taking care of each other, guys. Come on, man. Look at that, Mr. Boomtown's down to 9th place, 9th to 6th place. It speed up the field a bit, but that doesn't matter because over here and at the front of the field, we can see the top three are glued together. Dark Barrier, the Costa King, and a different looking Costa Livery this time in the Mustang, being attacked by Stardocaster in the Lambo. And we've got Eddie John, another Oro card in third place. Lamborghini is doing good here. They must be ecstatic over there in Italy because I didn't expect Lamborghini to be doing that well. So on board with Cluston, and all I have to say, Cluston, sir, you are in trouble because the Lexus is a purgatory car. You can set it up with very low downforce. It's not that quick in a straight line. You have cars with more downforce billion on a straight, which is very annoying. I know the Lexus is very intimate. And if you set up for high downforce, if you go against cars with high downforce as well, it's not the quickest. The Lexus is a purgatory car. It's okay, but not great. And you can see these guys are already bolting away from it. As we get at the final corner, so Doug Barron first place, Cluster, I mean, sorry, Stratocast in second in, in the slipstream. Eddie Jordan is teammate in third, as it looks like they are leaving Cluster for dead on the street. Even with the slipstream, he's gonna struggle. So, what I've said to you guys, the Lexus is one car to which, if you see, if you see someone doing well with the Lexus on most tracks, it's not the car, it is the driver. Because like, it's a purgatory car. Look, Cluster is nowhere now. As it looks like Stratocast has got a good slipstream passing Doug Barrow. Eddie Jordan says, hey man, I want some too. Let's make your Lamborghini one too. The Italians must be having fits of joy over there. But it was the Doug Barrow said, no sir, this is my position. But Eddie Jordan on the outside takes second place. Lamborghini one too. Goodness gracious, no one would have expected this. Actually, that's a lie. I didn't expect this. I, I've driven the Lamborghini a few times. Not that great with it. The Stratocast is getting purples, but much like we've said before, purples on the second lap do not matter because everyone gets a purple. It's from the third lap onwards always start seeing what's happening. And Scrooge then looks to be as predicted faster than Doug Barrow because Doug Barrow's Mustang, as we've seen from San Quasar, is a car set up for the straights. But when he's in the corners, he takes it easy, but he's not that slow in the corners, which means he's ultimately, him and the Mustang are a great team and they are hard to beat because he does not overdrive in the corners, which is a problem with some people. Because some people will try to drive a car that's not that fast in the corners, in the corners to try and minimize time loss, but in the end, he just end up being slower. But Starrow Cats looks to have a bit of a lead, so he's in first place as we hit the final corner, on board with Cruz, and now we're on board with Eddie Jordan as well. We see Doug Barry in second place. Last time, Eddie Jordan got a beautiful exit, and I'm he gets a beautiful exit, but Doug Barrow's gonna have the slipstream this time. Is Doug Barrow gonna be able to get past? Because Eddie Jordan's gonna have slipstream from his teammate Stratocaster in first place. Where's Cluston? Where's Cluston? So Stratocaster, Eddie Jordan, Doug Barrow, who looks to have had a bit of contact with Eddie Jordan, kind of boosting a bit, so he's messed up his slipstream, but didn't matter. Looks like he got past anyway. Cluston in the slipstream. He looks like to have geared this car a bit too short. Maybe if he had geared it a bit longer, it's just, yeah, he might be able to make more inroads, but in the slipstream, doing 175 ain't that great because most of these cars do 170 without the slipstream. So he's trying to line it up on the inside, but once he gets out the slipstream, it's game over. So he, all I can say to you is, if he doesn't make a mistake, guys, Cluston is a shoe in for driver of the race. Because like I said, him keeping up with these guys, considering how much for Pink to got the Lexus is, is amazing to me. I'm sorry. I might be biased because I've driven the Lexus a lot. But to be fair, once you've driven the Lexus, you will understand what I'm saying if you're doing it for a considerable amount of time. It's a tough car to drive fast. Tough car to be competitive. On board with Eddie Jordan looking behind.
behind us. Ooh, and John looks a great gun, a bit too deep in the corner. That bird catches up, he's like, thank you very much. I expected you to leave me like nowhere business in the corners, but if you don't make mistakes, I'm gonna be right close by, try to get the slips to me as cruise down the grazing and barriers like there's no tomorrow. He's pushing extra hard in that Lexus. Like Scarlet Cast is up there in the lead, and he looks to have been caught up by Eddie Jordan, who looks to have scampered away a bit from Doug Barrow. So Doug Barrow must have had a terrible couple of coins, but now Cruise is right close to him. And this last round, any journey, any journey must must who get the fastest lap of, of this of, of this lap, I think, because he's caught up right back to his teammate. Let's hope nothing bad happens. Lamborghini one two, they're gonna be happy with this. So Doug Barrett there, Chris then in fourth place. And so on board Stratocaster, this Lamborghini just shoot out the final corner. It is a thing of beauty seeing them get out the final corner. So we are on the stretch for the penultimate time. We are about to cast the finish line onto the fourth and final lap. And we are now on board with Cruiston. He is in the slipstream. Look at this. Nothing is happening. He is losing ground. Maybe if Doug Brad did not, not, I was going to say maybe if Doug Brad did not slip to me, it would be better, but trust me. Wouldn't. So Chris is getting left for dinner on the street again as Doug Barrow is trying to attack Eddie Jordan. But as he gets out the slipstream, Eddie Jordan's got the slipstream of his teammates, so he ain't gonna be able to get the pass. So we're looking at Stratocaster behind Stratocaster. Oh, it looks like a bit of miscommunication between the teammates. Stratocaster changed his mind last moment there. Eddie Jordan down into third. Doug Barrow must be thinking to himself, what are these guys doing? These guys are teammates. They shouldn't be putting themselves in such compromising positions that he gets a great exit out the second corner. Doug Barrow gets into first place. What sort of plot twist is this? The Lamborghini bosses must be throwing fits of outrage in Italy now. Lamborghini just tossed away a one-two. They're now second and third. Things cannot get any worse. And it looks like Eddie Jordan, oh, he grazed the barrier. He is now down into third place. Cruston up into third. Things are falling apart for Lamborghini. And Doug Bell is making the hay whilst the sun shines. He is gone. And all these guys are fighting. Because I think what happened is Eddie Jordan got caught out by, uh, by Stratocast's last, last moment, moment move in, out to the inside for, for the first corner. They, they hit each other a bit. And obviously Stratocast was feeling bad that he messed up his teammate and he lost a bit of his rhythm. And Doug Barrett just passed on it. Because the king is trying to rule everywhere. He's been ruling Saki the Sampasa. Now he's all out here showing the ooh, one body cruise and it's Eddie Jordan. Breaks very deep and he, he, he went too wide. Up. It's not that he be, he's not going to be behind Christian, but I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think he's going to guide to third place, but we know that Lexus is dead slow. So Dan Bell looks to be going over here to take this impressive win. Good God Almighty! And it looks like Dan Bell got the fastest lap of the final with two overtakes. He got the fastest lap. Stanley got second. Eddie Jordan got third. Christian in the Finishing fifth, but it looks like the battle for six isn't over. And the, there's the two West Midlands points. Mr. Boomtown and Nitro on the straight. We see the power of the GTR. These guys would have been weapons if they hadn't got into each other at the beginning of the race. Goodness gracious, what a great win from, from Doug Barry. He pounced, man. The Lamborghini guys went to the Lamborghini. Look, look at that. So that's what happened. Like, started cast a change line last moment. And obviously, they were about to get in the breaking zone. So everyone has different breaking points most of the time. So obviously, Eddie Jordan couldn't avoid Stratocast before he started breaking. Because once he took the inside line, he had to break earlier because he was defending. So Eddie Jordan kind of clipped him, hit the barrier. Doug Barrow took it. And he was gone. So that was ultimately the overtake of the race you saw from Doug Barrow. Two for the price of one. But drive off the race for me goes to Knuston. He Because... Look, I said, it's a purgatory car. There is no section of track at which he was the fastest. Even if you go out the corner, the final corner break, it wasn't nothing because look, we can visibly see the Mustang disappearing. But when it mattered, he was there. He was trying to pressure these guys because that's all he could do because he wasn't that much faster anywhere else. The Lexus, hey man, tough car driver. You don't have drive by Cruz, then he gets driver off the race. Fastest lap of the race goes to Mr. Doug Barrow. And he got it on the final lap. On the fa he got two overtakes. And he got the fastest lap. Wow. I, I don't know what to say. But it was a great win, man. Powerful win. 
And last but not least, we got livery off the race. We got Nitro in the tag. Tag Hoya, livery M6. Oh, look at that. Nice black simple. It's a be beautiful thing, man. One of my favorite liveries I've seen from Nitro. But anyway, guys, you guys know the deal, man. Nerf representing. Like, share, and subscribe, man. Peace out. Here we go! This is number one bullshit.